Ari Mas Talks with Amit Vats. Today, I bring to you UK India Partnership on Renewable Energy Initiatives and the Partnership of UK as a partner country to South India's most influential renewable energy show, Renewex. I have with me Dr. Andrew Fleming, British Deputy High Commissioner in Hyderabad, who will share his views with us. Welcome, Dr. Andrew, to Ari Master Talks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really, it's a pleasure to be here. It's our pleasure. Dr. Andrew, how do you see the UK-India partnership evolving over the years? Well, the UK and India um, are already working closely together, including research and uh, innovation for a clean energy transition and to improve global resilience through the India-led International Solar Alliance and the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure and the Green Growth Equity Fund, which includes investments of £120 million by both countries. So we have joint research and innovation partnerships to develop the next generation of solar buildings and energy efficiency solutions. India has a vital role to play at COP26, where the world has come together in Glasgow to demonstrate renewed action under the Paris Agreement. And through the Commonwealth Litter Programme, the UK and India are also working to address plastic pollution from both land and sea-based sources, a Twin Cities Marine Litter Initiative to address waste management at regional and city level is also being discussed. And earlier this year, the UK and Indian Prime Ministers adopted an ambitious India-UK roadmap to 2030 to steer cooperation for the next decade. And they emphasised that enhanced India-UK bilateral cooperation can not only reap mutual benefits, but also be a global force for good to revive lives and livelihoods, promote peace and prosperity around the world, and protect and preserve the planet for future generations to enjoy. They agreed to step up UK-India collaboration on climate change and low carbon transition through a new partnership on renewables and power including offshore wind, energy efficiency, and storage and electric mobility, and to explore joint work on green hydrogen. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fleming, for that. So, Dr. Fleming, how do you see, uh, what are the plans, you know, what are the UK government's plans to make this partnership further grow and enrich? Well, as we speak, the UK, in partnership with Italy, are hosting the UN Climate Change Conference, COP26 in Glasgow, as I've already mentioned. Uh, and this is an opportunity for the world to come together and commit to urgent action. The UK is already setting a strong example on climate action with a legally binding target to cut emissions to net zero by 2050. The COP26 summit is our best chance to set the world on the path towards a global warming limit of 1.5 degrees. And India has a vital role to play as the world comes together in Glasgow to demonstrate renewed action under the Paris Agreement and is already taking impressive action, for example, India's target of 450 gigawatt renewable energy by 2030 is one of the most ambitious targets in the world. In order to achieve this target, India will need to build a lot of infrastructure by 2040, which can help India lead the way in new clean technology and infrastructure development. The UK can support India in this journey towards achieving this target through joint working and collaboration 
on new green technology development and knowledge sharing. And the UK-India economic relationship is already strong with bilateral trade of over 18 billion pounds equivalent in 2020, supporting nearly half a million jobs in one another's economies. The UK-India 2030 roadmap intends to bring the economies and people closer together over the next decade and boost cooperation in areas that matter to both countries. This includes a shared ambition to double trade by 2030 and to start negotiations on a free trade agreement by the end of this year. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fleming. You know, we are definitely looking forward for realization of all these things. So, Dr. Fleming, what are your expectations by participating at RenewX 2021 in Hyderabad? Well, we're absolutely delighted to be uh, the country partner this year for RenewX Expo 2021 and to get an opportunity via our UK pavilion to highlight the UK's strengths in renewable energy technologies and at the same time, the uh, network with like-minded companies. I would like to congratulate Informa Markets for organising RenewX and taking this bold step to open up this space again to ensure industry stakeholders can meet with each other and explore potential areas of collaboration. The UK Prime Minister outlined his 10-point plan for a green industrial revolution in December last year. The key themes which directly linked with RenewX Expo are offshore wind, hydrogen, electric vehicles, carbon capture and storage, and innovation and finance. And we need to ensure we work on these themes with our Indian stakeholders and implement the innovative te technological solutions from the UK in partnership with all of you on the ground here in India. And we are very excited for this opportunity to meet with the who's who of the India renewable sector at RenewX here in Hyderabad. I would like to invite Indian businesses to engage with our trade advisors at the UK Pavilion to understand about the UK's expertise and how we can support their green energy transition journeys. Thanks, thanks, Dr. Fleming. In fact, it is our pleasure that we, we get to part, uh, partner with UK at RenewX. So, uh, Dr. Fleming, what can the UK offer to the Indian renewable energy industry in terms of investments, technical partnerships, skill development, and many more? All right, well, this is a big question. So, firstly, in terms of the uh, investment pillar, the UK's export credit agency, UK Export Finance, has four billion uh, pound appetite to support renewable energy projects in India. With 18 years of financing available in either India rupees or a foreign currency and provided in the form of direct financing from the UK Treasury or a 100% UK sovereign guarantee. The UK is leading the shift to a net zero economy, creating significant investment opportunities for international investors and has a tremendous focus on renewable energy and zero emission, especially with our new clean growth strategy and the PM's 10 point plan launched in November 2020. Given that UK is hosting the COP26 this year, we have various offers and initiatives which may be of interest to the uh, Indian fraternity. And the renewable energy sector in the UK, um, regarding them, let me say the UK's expertise is helping drive 
the global change to net zero carbon emissions. In 2019, over 50% of electricity generated in the UK came from low carbon sources. And the UK is the first major economy to pass a net zero emissions law with a target to bring greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2050, while encouraging investment in low carbon technologies. 256 million pounds of UK government funding has been allocated to develop the energy storage market and the equivalent of 122 billion US dollars has been invested in UK renewable energy generation projects between 2010 and 2019. Number one for the most offshore wind generated in the world, 45 billion investment needed to upgrade energy networks and 500 megawatts extra energy from waste needed, a 4 billion investment opportunity. Reasons to invest in the UK, the UK government policy and consumer concerns are creating new markets for waste management. Future regulations for a more circular economy will provide economic incentives for high performing companies. UK government is encouraging investment in materials processing and reprocessing infrastructure to reduce a forecast capacity gap. And the UK is one of the leading countries for accessing finance to support investment in waste management infrastructure. UK's government is investing in research and development and industry players are exploring technology and process innovation. And finally, the UK waste uh, management industry's total revenue in 2020 was £3.7 billion, pounds, with an annual growth of 2.2% between 2015 and 2020, and is expected that growth will be uh, in the region of 1.9% over the next five years. Opportunities in the UK, um, there are two I will highlight. It is expected that Total waste arising will uh, reduce as a result of policy action in the resources and waste strategy for England by 2030. And there remains a potential capacity gap in the UK, estimated to be around 4.6 million tonnes in 2025 for creating a market for investors to develop new facilities. An increasing interest in the circular economy will see recyclers emerge as key players in the waste management market as UK develops ambitious targets to increase household recycling rates to 65% and improve the consistency of what is collected. Incentives in the UK, uh, if I may highlight um, four of these. First of all, commercial incentives, the non-domestic renewable heat incentive uh, is a government scheme that provides financial incentives to increase the uptake of renewable heat by businesses, the public sector and in the non-profit uh, organisations. Secondly, £60 million pounds to reduce packaging waste. The uh, Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund aims to support innovation in fast growing areas where the UK has a world leading research base and businesses ready to innovate. As part of this, the Smart Sustainable Plastic Packaging Challenge seeks to dramatically reduce plastic waste by 2025 and it will provide £60 million of government funds and a further £149 million of jointly invested industry funds with an aim to make the UK a leader in smart and sustainable plastic packaging. 
non-tax uh, incentives, Innovate UK and the UK's innovation agency who provide non-repayable cash for research and developmental programs. And since 2007, they have invested around £2.5 billion to help businesses across the UK to innovate with match funding from industry taking the total value of these projects to in excess of £4.3 billion. And lastly, uh, in this section, tax incentives. Companies that spend money developing new products, processes or services may also be eligible for tax reductions. And the UK has a generous and uh, internationally uh, competitive research and development credit system with different regimes for large companies and SMEs. The patent box offers a reduced rate of corporation tax of just 10% on profits earned from patented inventions and certain other intellectual property. Moving on to global collaborations uh, to uh, develop new technologies. Um, let me start by referring to uh, the reuse um, of energy materials. The Birmingham Energy Institute is a nationally recognized center of excellence for future energy solutions. And in late 2019, they announced plans for the creation of an innovation hub in Birmingham that brings together experts from industry and academia in the UK, Germany and China. In establishing the Innovation Hub, the university is looking to develop collaborative research programs related to waste processing and recycling with an emphasis on development of technologies capable of delivering biofuels. In terms of bringing industry players together, the World Waste to Energy and Resources Summit has gained global recognition as a summit where deals are made and new partnerships formed. Held in London annually, the summit has a mission to promote innovation, investment and collaboration across the waste to energy industry. It attracts over 250 international waste management CEOs, local government, project developers and technology companies, engineering firms, EPCs and finance community uh, representatives. And in terms of mapping waste streams, the Scottish Bio Resource Mapping Tool is a pioneering approach to developing value chains in the bio and circular economies. The tool maps raw material and bio resource arising across Scotland down to local authority level. And the data provides companies, investors, and stakeholders uniquely detailed insights and visuals relating to more than 27 million tonnes of bioresources arising in Scotland every year. In relation to technical partnerships with the Government of India, we are working with the Ministry of Power on making the power sector smarter and sustainable through the power sector reform programme, which is um, jointly with the Ministry of Power now created a new centre for energy regulation in Kanpur. Under the UK India um, initiative on corporate green leadership, we have brought together existing industry groupings and global industry under one umbrella alliance with an aim to scale up voluntary adoption of low carbon solutions by India businesses and their supply chains. And under the UK India Tech Partnership, we have launched an innovation challenge fund that will help research institutions and industry come together to develop new electric mobility solutions in Maharashtra. The other emerging area that I would 
uh, foresee both the UK and India um, should be around um, green hydrogen in terms of collaboration. And this August, the UK launched its hydrogen strategy and accompanying policy documents laying the foundation um, for a hydrogen economy by 2030, settling out how the government will support innovation and stimulate investments in low carbon hydrogen in the 2020s to deliver our ambition of five gigawatts low carbon hydrogen production by 2030 and position hydrogen for further scale up on the path to net zero. The hydrogen strategy sets out almost one billion pounds of UK government support for hydrogen and other low carbon technologies. And international collaboration here is vital to ensuring we effectively unlock the potential of hydrogen. Working together, we can go further, faster and for global good. We will take an open, active approach to international hydrogen cooperation. And the UK is also keen to share our own experience and to learn from the experience and knowledge of others very much, including here in India, by sharing the outcomes of cutting edge research and demonstration projects, developing common technical and emission codes and standards, and joining up policy and regulatory activity, we can expedite the uh, creation of international hydrogen markets. We are keen to work with our strategic partners uh, such as India on hydrogen and welcome opportunities to support multilateral activity uh, and use bilateral uh, initiatives to add value. For example, joint research uh, and innovation projects, especially where we share common interests or hold complementary expertise, such as in specific sectors or technologies. By developing common regulatory approaches and policies as appropriate, and finally, by facilitating long distance trade and commercial partnerships in hydrogen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fleming, for sharing all the initiatives. We definitely look forward for mutual benefit uh, out of the initiatives. So, uh, Dr. Fleming, can you highlight a few success stories between the UK and India in the renewable energy sector? Sure. As you um, are aware that uh, big energy giants from the UK, such as BP, Shell and Rolls-Royce, are already all present in India, and they have started their journey towards energy transition. They are ready to walk the talk in terms of climate and their net zero commitments. Apart from these, despite the lockdown in the last 18 months, we have seen UK supply chain companies with their innovative products and offerings working with the Indian companies to forge partnerships and collaborate on innovative solutions. I am happy to share a couple of success stories between UK companies and Indian stakeholders. Uh, first of all, UK's um, artificial intelligence and machine learning firm, Vidrona, had worked with Indian Discom BRPL to provide them um, O&M services through drone analytics in order to ensure each household in South Delhi should get uninterrupted power supplies. Another example is the UK firm Green Fuels and Aris Bioenergy, who signed an MOU set up under JV in the name of um, Aris Green Fuels Private Limited to set up a used cooking oil processing plant in Pune. And the uh, plant is currently coming up and should be operational uh, very soon. Power Roll UK is a flexible solar uh, PV technology provider 
in the uh, UK and Thermex Group India signed an agreement to develop the market for solar um, for solar film in India. The agreement will see the uh, companies collaborate to assess the market potential for scale manufacturing and deployment of power rolls uh, unique solar film in India. The joint activity will include identifying applications for lightweight solar film and green energy solutions for the region. Um, in terms of, uh, I, I, the, I'll give one more example. I think UK renewable energy technical consultant uh, Green Enco has set up a zero uh, emission EV solar charging uh, carport station in the uh, IISC Bangalore campus. And this facility is part of the uh, India UK Clean Air Program partnership. I can go on because there are many more, but I, I will stop in the interest right, right. of time. <laughs> so, Dr. Fleming, last but not the least, how has been your experience in India so far? Um, well, on a personal level, I have had a most fantastic time uh, in uh, India. I think um, uh, it has been inspiring, uh, educational. I've been absolutely blown away by, by, by the people, their warmth, their hospitality. Uh, and I think most of all, uh, being somebody who sits in Hyderabad, the innovation and, uh, and, and, and dynamism. Um, so uh, on that level and on the level of my family, I think we've had the most uh, fantastic time here. And if I can say that, you know, we um, want to work with you all on an ambitious roadmap for global climate action, which briefly leads to implementation for more renewable energy uh, in India. I think this is so important. And every day living here in India, you can see and hear and learn and feel the impact of climate change um, and uh, the um, and, and, and the uh, and, 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 and the need why what's happening in COP is so important, the action uh, that we um, need to take as a world and India's role uh, in, in, in this. But as much as uh, the, the, there are challenges here, India is very much part of the solution and very much uh, at the top of the list of uh, nations around the world that uh, the UK uh, wants to uh, even more deepen collaboration with. We um, uh, also, I would just like to finally uh, again thank uh, uh, RenewX uh, for um, the, the partnership. I think I'm, you know, I'm really excited for this for this event, uh, and you know, it's fantastic that it's coming uh, coming to Hyderabad, where um, you know there, there, there is so much innovation and good practice to learn and draw from as well. So thank you, thank you very much indeed. Uh, very nice to uh, speak to you and um, um, in, be part of this interview. All the best.